Hey guys, welcome back. It's a rather mild day here at Raspberry Rock, and I decided to take the dogs for a hike. Um, firstly, because they're calling for rain or freezing rain later, and uh, well, let's get them out here while we still can and get them some, get them some exercise. And I'm going to do a video on, uh, I guess I'll call it scenes from the cabin, and we're going to go through the hike. But anyway, I want to share some pro tips with you. Pro bushcraft tips. <laughs> One of them might be, don't take dogs if you're trying to film anything in the woods. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, one of the things that I always tell people, if you're going out in the bush, well, the first thing is, if you're going out in the bush for a day or whatever, take some plastic bags with you, because you never know when you're going to want to collect something. And we, we're always collecting stuff like wintergreen for tea, or uh, juniper berries, or quartz rocks, nice ones if we find them. Uh, they're also good for other things, like sitting on, if you're sitting in snow. But anyway, uh, one thing I was doing today is looking for birch bark, because my birch, birch bark bag is getting a little low in the cabin. And as you might know, or as you might remember, uh, birch bark is one of my favorite um, fire starters uh, in the world. And uh, I, I always use it for starting my fires because it's a, it's a great, it's a, it's a renewable product. It's a great natural product. It's what, what makes it so awesome is that um, it has a natural oil in it, which just burns, burns really, really well. And it burns for a while, even a simple piece of birch bark. So, you know, if you're, if, if, if you're going out in the woods for a day, I would say, you know, take some bags and, you know, find some birch bark and just put it in your bag because, you know, if you get stuck out, you know, and you got to make a fire to survive, uh, you might need some birch bark. And, you know, just when you need to find a birch tree, they're not around. And you're like, damn it, I saw all those birch trees. Why didn't I grab some? So my favorite way to gather birch bark is, uh, quite simply, you find a birch tree, and then you just find the birch bark laying on the ground because birch bark just naturally peels off. Like, it's, the outer shell is always kind of peeling off. And and uh, and then falling, and revealing an, an inner layer of birch bark, because it's it's always growing new layers underneath. Um, but in conditions like this, where the snow on the ground, I'm just not going to find any. So, what you want to do uh, is is go to a birch tree and just find the stuff that's already peeling off, and then just peel that off. But the one thing you want to make sure is you don't expose the inner wood, because that, then you're damaging the tree. And when the, when the wood is exposed to the environment, that will damage it. So just peel off the outer layers. Um, if you find a piece uh, kind of hanging off and you're not sure if pulling that piece off is going to reveal bark, then just take your knife. Uh, another thing you should always take on your <laughs> your hiking trips, just take a knife and then cut off the piece that's uh, uh, that's dangling, and that should be good. Um, one thing I would advise against is um, taking birch bark from long dead wood, uh, kind of like this piece. And you'll find, like, if you find a log uh, decaying on the ground or a stump or something, and you find birch bark there, often it's not good. It'll come off really thick, and you'll find it might have a layer of rotten wood on the inside of it, um, and the oil is kind of um, no longer in it. <laughs> does, does it evaporate? I'm not sure. Does it just leak out, or does it just dry up? I'm not sure. But it doesn't burn very well. It might burn, but it's not going to burn very well, and it's no good for, for starting fires. So I would, go, I would always go looking for the fresh stuff. And you'll notice that in, in, in a lot of pieces of birch bark, let's take this piece for example, um, there are layers upon layers of it. And you can see that you know, while this just looks like one piece of bark, you can still peel up another layer there. And these, the thinner the layer, the, the easier that's going to catch fire. The faster it'll burn, but the easier it catches fire. And sometimes... You can grab a piece of birch bark. I don't know if I can do it with this one. And you can peel that into like two distinct, like, there we go. Two distinct layers. In fact, there's probably even more layers here. I'm not sure. But, and this stuff will burn really easily. And if I was doing a, a fire starting video, which I may do someday. I'm not doing that today. I'm just, I just brought a lighter to, to, uh, to light it, for example. But you want to take that as thin as you can get it. And, in fact, you would even take your knife and run it along there and just like shave some little powder. It's almost like powder, you would shave that off and then you'd use that for fire starter. But I just wanted to show you how easily and how well this stuff lights up. If I can find my lighter, there it is. So watch how easily this, this really light stuff lights up. 
It just burns like crazy. <gasps> Too much? No, 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 no. But this other stuff, this other stuff is also good, and this is this will burn for a while. And even if you find birch bark and it's wet, it will still often still start. And you can try blowing it and drying it out. And you can see the black that's coming off that. That's the oil that's burning. And that burns really well. And you could easily start a fire. You get the right kindling. <laughs> it's blowing toward me. So you can see how well that works. And I always laugh when people say, Oh, you should use fire starter in your fire. And I'm like, why would I? Look at this. Look at that burn. I don't need a fire starter. <laughs> Always judge the wind direction before you start a fire. <laughs> you don't want it blowing towards your shelter. Put that out. There you go. Zoom. Ah! My camera. Please go. Go on, Jim. Go. So there you go. That's my information on birch bark and I typically will fill up a bag and bring it bring that back and that will last for a long time at least a month maybe longer if I fill this up <coughs> with birch bark um, and I'm still on my property and there's lots of birch birch trees around here and as I said if I'm just out hiking I would take a plastic bag and just gather whatever with it, whatever I, I naturally find I rarely have to go out actually looking for birch bark because I usually always have some on hand and that's how I start all my fires Are you ready? I don't think I'm sitting very squarely on my plastic bag because my balls are wet. <laughs> Damn it. Ah. And one more tip before I go. These lower branches on pine trees, the ones that have, uh, they're dead and they've lost most of their bark or all of their bark, are excellent for starting fire. They're excellent kindle. And you can tell when they're ready to, uh, when they'll burn really well by how easily they snap. And they snap like that. It's gonna be really good for burning. And this is what I do when I'm, you know, uh, starting fire. Or, I should say, I, uh, I collect a box of this stuff. And I use it for starting my fires. Because it's really good. And I've got, hundreds of pine trees around here, so I'll never run out of kindling. <laughs>